thank you very much for coming to my talk. Um, motivation. Um, my name is uh, Mufrid Krilic. Uh, I'm here accompanying uh, first LEGO League team uh, Septem from Norway. They're currently busy uh, preparing the robot. Uh, practicing tomorrow or today is the big day. Uh, so I'll be spending some time with you guys now. So let's get started. Um, this is a familiar face, right? Um, uh, what I like about uh, this quote is uh, this focus on curiosity. Uh, it brings out uh, the child in me. Uh, uh, and I believe an uh, old Albert uh, managed to, uh, to do what he did uh, and claiming that uh, uh, what he actually was, was passionately curious, but also very smart. So it believes, uh, I believe that uh, yeah, we can get everywhere. Uh, and this curiosity, I will something, uh, something on the, uh, I'll be coming, coming back to you. So, um, uh, the short overview, uh, I'll introduce myself. Um, talking about it with the mentor coach show in the first LED projects. A little bit about motivation, uh, my own experiences, uh, and about uh, innovation, and what patterns I suggest you should consider applying in your project. Uh, and we'll uh, sum it up in the end. Uh, uh, I, I'm not, uh, I'm going to talk about motivation and innovation, but professionally I'm not, uh, I don't have a professional background. And I'm not, I haven't been studying motivational theories or something, but uh, so the talk is about, about uh, based on my own experiences in mentoring first level in teams, uh, what I've uh, observed uh, and see what works, it doesn't work, uh, and uh, how motivation plays a big role in, in a, a first level in project. So it's uh, uh, mainly first level in, uh, for guys uh, from the FRC or some first tech challenge, but. Uh, Perhaps it's, uh, it's applicable to you too. Uh, so, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a first level leader mentor coach uh, for the past six years. I've been coaching uh, teams. Uh, uh, in the beginning, it was uh, um, uh, classroom teams uh, from uh, uh, fifth grade to seventh grade. Uh, uh, elementary school. I'm not sure how Norwegian education system maps to international, so I'll just keep it <laughs> what I know. Uh, then I'll be, I'm not a teacher myself, but I've been assisting teachers in, uh, in the first Lego League um, uh, exercises that, that were, not, uh, uh, were not possible to, uh, to implement in the classroom, so we did uh, on the afternoons and evenings. Uh, after three years, uh, um, I uh, got engaged with some uh, freelance private teams. Uh, we did everything in our own spare time. Uh, 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 that's where I guess I learned the most uh, uh, about uh, being a mentor. Uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, I've been involved in every part of the project and, uh, and the teams I've been coaching are, are very good from six guys uh, and girls to all, all the 20 students. I'm born in Bosnia Herzegovina and currently live in Norway, enjoying my family life there. Um, I'm a little bit more professionally, uh, who am I, what I'm doing for a living. I'm a senior software developer, uh, actually a technical coach at my company, DIPS in Norway. And we are, we are uh, creating or uh, implementing electronic uh, patient records for the leading hospitals. I'm not the leader there. Uh, it's a very much used system, 80,000 daily users, um, uh, some of the more Europe's largest hospitals. Uh, but what I'm really proud of is that my company is a proud sponsor of a local first level uh, tournament. And they helped me uh, 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 make this talk. Uh, so, uh, just overview what I'm, what I'm focusing on. Uh, we have this is just a, a division of three major parts in the first level projects. You just uh, have to enroll the students, start a project, and finish them. So 
I'm not talking about uh, recruitment or something, just talk about what happens after you start a project. So, um, what about uh, a mentor or coach? Is there actually a definition of the role? Um, I guess uh, if, uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, we, we get some, uh, some guides from, from FIRST and uh, or, or, uh, or regional FIRST authorities or what mentors should do or could do. Uh, but I, I guess I, I haven't seen a, a precise definition, uh, I believe. Uh, so I just uh, tried to uh, look it up and um, there's, a, there's a dictionary definition which I believe uh, very much alike. Uh, trust, counsel, or guide, tutor, or coach. Uh, coming back to that. Uh, it seems the word, <laughs> the word crew itself came from Greek mythology. A friend of Deceus, uh, trusted for education of his son. Uh, okay, so uh, what do we do as mentors? Uh, I guess there are some administration tasks we do, uh, logistics to get the team running, uh, funding of course, <laughs> mention it. <laughs> um, but what about uh, teaching and motivation? Uh, how, I, I'm not sure uh, uh, how uh, standardized is that, how, uh, and to what degree do we teach them, do we able to motivate them? In our projects. So uh, a little bit about motivation, what I managed to find out in the early 30s, so there was a study that motivation is the most important factor for productivity and quality. Uh, something called the Port Hawthorne effect by Elton Mayer. And there, there's uh, some conclusions here. And there are some conclusions here like workplace and social environments, recognition, security, sense of belonging are very important, friendly relationship with the supervisor. Now this is a theoretical, of course, but what I really like here is that, to me, this maps quite well, this writes quite well with first whole maps. Uh, and uh, uh, it, like uh, the, the, the the theme of uh, our first Lego Lead project, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's, it's different every year. Uh, some some themes are uh, more applicable to uh, some students than others. They were interested in. Uh, Next year, we took the old bit. Some are interested in some are interested in astronomy, some are not. But I guess the core values is that should be uh, applicable for across the all projects. And it seems like, um, from a theoretical background, that motivation, uh, motivation itself, is a kind of path to, to, to embrace the core values. So what I'm trying to suggest is that mentor is first and foremost a motivator. Uh, the other aspects of mentor tasks are uh, secondary. Uh, we all have our leaders that motivate us. And I'm not suggesting that mentor should be a, should be a leader in first level team, but there is a one aspect of leadership that we should apply, that's motivation. Uh, for me personally, working with, a, with someone that's uh, a leader that motivates you to it brings out the best in me. So uh, what I suggest uh, is that we should, uh, as mentors or coaches, uh, focus on motivating the team. Now, motivating to achieve what? Well, uh, it's, I'm going to talk about ownership. And this is the claim I, I, I state. Uh, motivation leads to ownership, ownership leads to innovation. And what I mean by ownership is that the team itself, the kids, they, they feel they own it, it's theirs. They are driving the project, uh, uh, not the mentor. We, we, we have a kind of, uh, our role is to, is to um, uh, convince them that this is so much fun, that, 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 that <laughs> they are pushing the project forth. And every part of the project, whether it be it research, or programming, marketing, everything. So when you feel, when you feel ownership, when you own something, then the results came. Uh, so, um, and there is there is a there is a connection, I believe, between ownership and innovation. Uh, there is um, the prizes that are being uh, uh, get some prizes in the first level league for the innovative designs of the robot, for innovative um, project uh, solutions as well. So, so the point is how to get from 
how to get to, 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 you know, to innovation actually happening in your first teams. So, uh, and uh, I believe uh, uh, if you focus on motivation, and, uh, and from there, we see that kids actually claim ownership of every part of the project, then the innovation will happen. And of course, the core values. Uh, I, uh, personally, I've experienced that uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, uh, they, they really uh, sound nice and uh, uh, very, uh, yeah, very easy to, to absorb, but sometimes they are difficult to apply. Or, or for children to, to, uh, to understand how to apply them. So there is uh, uh, using time and uh, uh, using time to motivate them to see the, the value of core values, the importance of core values, and uh, uh, that motivate them to, to, to apply them in their in their project. So how do we how do we get there? To innovation. And what kind of innovation? Now. Uh, uh, as I said, the European Enterprise for Innovative Robot, or Innovative Design, or Innovative Solution to a Project, uh, uh, Innovative Ideas. But wh what I've seen are those moments of inspiration that are uh, actually a kind of uh, uh, prelude to, to innovation. It's, it's those small steps that actually will bring out the innovative the innovative uh, solutions in the end, in the long term. Uh, and th those moments of inspirations are what uh, makes it uh, all the work <laughs> worth doing for me. So uh, uh, um, I'm not talking about something that uh, some uh, patterns or theories that will uh, guarantee the innovation to happen, but I'm talking about motivate students to, uh, to uh, 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 own the projects, the part of the project, so that they can they can produce the small innovative steps along the way. That uh, so this is the moments of inspiration. I have some examples. This is for my uh, uh, my tips. Uh, it was in, uh, uh, my second year as a mentor. Uh, in the robot design, uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, we uh, uh, bought a, a core set and an extension set for robot, and uh, there were some sensors there, and uh, we just told, uh, yeah, we just uh, along the student, along the students, we uh, read some introduction how color sensors work and so on, but we never talked about the uh, gyro sensor. And suddenly there was a funny evening. Uh, uh, my son was in, uh, working on something and trying to make a robot uh, make a turn. And uh, it was his own idea. Okay, let, let's try to do the gyro sensor. He, he can tell me the exact, uh, 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 the exact amount of uh, degrees I can turn the robot. And I'm looking at him, wow, I never told you that. <laughs> that was the moment of inspiration I was looking for. It just, it felt like he, he, he was really motivated, he was really interested to solve this task. And he, he, he proposed something innovative. That is, I mean, it, that's not innovation on a global scale, but for, for in that moment, that was a, a breakthrough for us, a small innovative step. Uh, year after that, uh, uh, they ditched uh, the, this, uh, robot design uh, instruction set that comes with the, with the core set and they, they would try to let's develop our own. What, what guys? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. We, we want to know our own. It's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. Leave it to us. Okay. <laughs> it was their own design. Uh, uh, that was uh, actually, actually they were so self confident they didn't even try to find some sources on that. So, uh, but I, I was really proud. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> and that's that's another moment of inspiration. I mean, they, they just they were they, they were so motivated. They, they had they felt ownership that let's be going to do this. We're going to drive this project. So they uh, went for their own uh, robot design. And then uh, a couple of years later, they they uh, 
they're actually trying, starting to apply good engineering practices that we, uh, we are, uh, myself as an engineer or software developer, I look often on the, on the internet or other places to, 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 to see if any other uh, have solved the same problems I'm having. And then they started to, I guess, a lot of teams going there on the YouTube and uh, looking on videos and, uh, and they tried, they started to video there and video here and combine it and uh, create it and uh, some innovative designs. Again, I never told them to do that. Uh, I never uh, showed them any uh, <laughs> sources, nothing. <laughs> they just kept uh, uh, searching for themselves, learning from the best teams. Uh, it's kind of, I believe it's kind of interesting that uh, uh, what, what is currently de facto uh, uh, a good engineering practice to, to see what other engineers uh, have, have, have done in, in other places, that, that kids the cell, themselves have discovered without uh, me as a mentor being uh, involved in uh, suggesting it. Uh, last year, we had um, another example. We had a project that uh, um, we were trying to, um, this is my uh, uh, next, uh, this is my uh, uh, other son. Uh, uh, he was involved in a project that they, they were um, uh, actually um, uh, in Norway, I guess it's not in the States or some other place, uh, uh, no offense, uh, but uh, in Norway there is really, really clean water from the spring. It's so clean that you can drink it, uh, and, and, and they, they concluded that there is no reason to buy water in the bottle. So uh, in Norway it works really well, and they, they, uh, they, uh, uh, their project was to create a marketing campaign. And, and tourists, I guess if you come to Norway from uh, other countries where uh, there is a significant difference in water quality in the bottle and from spring on the tap. Uh, uh, there, uh, you have you you go and buy the water, but in Norway there is no reason to. You can just drink it from the tap. It's it's really clean. And uh, we were talking about okay, how how are we going to um, how are we going to uh, 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 make tourists aware of this uh, solution. Uh, and, uh, and and then somebody mentioned, okay, we can perhaps make a promotional film at the end of the day or something. Okay, okay, let's. And then I said, okay, hey, then, then we just then let's just make it in your uh, make a note of it and we present it to the judges. And we, we said we didn't have time to, to make it. And um, two hours later, uh, three girls in the class they came to me and uh, this is the film. What? Yeah, this is the film. We made it. <laughs> So they just went to the other classroom and they filmed it and uh, <laughs> it was so good. It was uh, partly in German, partly in English and uh, I didn't know they, were, they, they could speak German. <laughs> 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 Definitely it was there. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, I was just uh, amazed. Um, couldn't believe myself. Uh, okay. And in those moments, I, I feel I'm a successful mentor. Uh, actually not doing too much, but motivating them to find their own solutions, to take their own steps, to search something new. So, uh, uh, it's a kind of innovation in that level, uh, I believe we should be focusing on uh, as mentors in first day. Uh, uh, and uh, I believe in, in, uh, in long term, if, if they if they see the values of, of those small innovative steps, then they, they will be able to to produce something really innovative in, in a couple of years. Uh, so, uh, how to achieve this? Uh, and uh, this is something um, from my own perspective as a professional software developer. Uh, uh, I I I. I decided that I will not teach them too much. Uh, uh, so uh, let them own any of it. And my claim is here as a mentor is not a teacher. Uh, of course, you can be a teacher by profession. But I believe when, when we engage in first level in project, this teaching aspect should be uh, subdued. And, and why is that? Because uh, how do you teach innovation? Uh, there are a lot of courses are there, I guess, uh, what the videos are there, and uh, uh, 
to do with the Lisa books. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's really, really possible to teach it. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> but we only admire those uh, uh, companies and products that really innovate. And uh, how to teach innovation to children? Uh, because uh, if we go back to this uh, Albert Einstein quote, they are born with this inherent curiosity. Uh, and this curiosity, I believe, it kind of uh, decreases as we get older. Uh, we are less and less curious. Uh, but children are um, actually curious about everything. And, and, and when you start from uh, what uh, in uh, Norway at least, it's uh, first Lego League is from 10 to 16 years old uh, kids. So the, the, I believe the level of curiosity in their minds is significant. So uh, th there is a potential there that, that actually would not be a, uh, possible to, to, to implement. Uh, 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 let's say you, you have adults on the same team, on the first level league project. If we have a bunch of adults, we couldn't, I'm sure we couldn't bring the same results because we lack this curiosity. Obviously, uh, some of us, uh, like Albert Einstein, uh, uh, were able to keep that curiosity in, 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 in inside and uh, be it a driving force. But uh, in first level equality, we are at least uh, presented with uh, 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 curious students, and that's, uh, uh, there's a possibility to, to, to uh, uh, employ that. Uh, so, uh, but it's really not uh, back to the slide of uh, to the slide of uh, uh, mentor role. Uh, the, there's a definition from Greek mythology that a, a mentor was was a, a teacher, a trusted education of Buddhism or something. But I believe I, I like this uh, this dictionary uh, definition much better. Uh, a trusted counselor. It really rhymes. Really sounds really nice. Uh, so, so uh, 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 teaching aside, motivation forward, um, so that uh, those small innovative steps based on curiosity could happen. So, uh, what are actually the patterns I'm suggesting? And this is, uh, in my own uh, experience, to set aside your professional competence. So now I'm a software developer. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, my company uh, works in uh, Deep's comp uh, works, uh, is in the uh, uh, electronic health record markets. It's a health, health, uh, health system is fairly complex. It's, uh, you learn a lot, uh, uh, programming is something I, I, I can do. Uh, what I chose, Personal, uh, I, I chose uh, quite consciously never to learn this Mindstorms programming language. Uh, uh, at least I, I learned it to, uh, to some basic level, so I can I can hold the course for new first level league students. Uh, like last year, I, I started a new team. Uh, okay, and okay, we don't have a, a one hour programming course in, uh, in Mindstorms. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, as a programmer, I could, I could, uh, I could have uh, learned much more, much more. I could have programmed, I could have perhaps uh, uh, <laughs> made my own website and put some courses out there. But uh, I believe there is a danger there. That if I had learned so much on EV3 uh, programming language, that uh, uh, I'm afraid that they could be too much dependent on me to solve their, their problems. So, quite consciously, uh, after six years, uh, uh, both my sons are much more fluent in EV3 programming than myself. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I have also I also a daughter, uh, eight years old. Today is a different birthday actually. Uh, so uh, uh, she's also starting to program on iPad, and uh, uh, the same 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 principle there. I'm not going to teach her too much. So this professional competence will of course be different among us. 
so uh, I believe this professional competence is, is not something that we should uh, focus on. It's more about this motivation part. And, and, that, and that, that, that's, that's what also is very, uh, that's what's interesting that it means that if you set aside a professional conference, anybody could be a mentor. It's not an overwhelming task. Uh, uh, what I haven't uh, focused on, but of course we could talk about, uh, is this uh, involving other parents and other uh, teachers in being in the uh, in, in get them involved in the, in the first level of the project. Uh, uh, like last year, uh, I was mentor for uh, uh, a bunch of 20 plus kids, and uh, uh, I was kind of lead mentor, and, uh, but uh, I managed to actually to motivate uh, four other uh, parents to, to be fairly active mentors and uh, help them uh, facilitate the evening exercise as well. And uh, uh, their professional competence was very different compared to each other. There was a teacher, there was another software developer, there was uh, actually a nurse. So, uh, and uh, 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 yeah, actually the guy who was a nurse, he, 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 he was the, the real motivator. He could, he could spend hours on the, on the uh, robot table and just, just uh, uh, trying to push the kids to, to solve the problems. He, he couldn't understand what was wrong when something went wrong. <laughs> but he was, okay, what can we do? Come on, can we ask yourselves the real questions. What can you do? Never, also, okay, then you have uh, take a break, five minutes, go back and be, keep on working. And that was a real motivator. So anybody could be a mentor if you just set your professional competence aside. Okay, so I'm not a teacher, but what about school teachers, as, as I believe and I, I hope, and uh, I actually work in uh, more and more of us in India, we implemented in school as a part of the, uh, part of the uh, class, uh, classroom education. So uh, uh, I believe that um, actually teachers should uh, um, uh, uh, couple the uh, the effect that first like, the league projects uh, give uh, to the, uh, the, 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 the the subjects they are going to, like math or, or science or something, uh, th uh, through the project itself, not not like, okay, today we're going to teach you programming, or we're going to teach you about uh, astronomy, about the, for next year's uh, team into the audit. Uh, but just, okay, let's just focus on the motivation part, motivate the students, to engage themselves, to own, uh, and uh, claim ownership, see that this is really fun, focus on that, use classroom lessons to that, and then see if it just goes on from there. <laughs> uh, so there's kind of this motivational leader uh, that we see out there, that the real, real leaders are those who inspire and motivate. So perhaps this teachers should uh, bring out this motivational leader aspect in them. So focus on motivation, ownership, and core values. Uh, and learn just enough of the challenge to be able to kickstart the project. Uh, uh, for older kids who've been in the first level league for, uh, for a couple of years, that's not even enough. Uh, that's not even necessary, sorry. Uh, uh, this team of ours, uh, Septem, uh, uh, they just, uh, like in the States, they, uh, I guess they published uh, uh, the, the team one week before they, uh, they went to Europe. So, so for them, it's no problem. They go on the internet one week before everybody else finds out and read the American <laughs> instructions. And they are, they are in, so I don't have to do anything, actually, just to make, make sure that they, are, uh, they have the, the the exercise aligned to each other, they can all uh, meet at the same time. But uh, I guess uh, for, for new teams, we should learn something, just a little bit. Uh, what it's all about, um, uh, uh, how do you get from, uh, from start of the project to the end, so logistically and so on. But uh, in the, like uh, what I said, example was uh, 
learn just enough of the programming language to, to, to be able to, uh, to, to give them a kickstart. And uh, um, what I experienced last year, uh, let's try to find it, uh, I had a one hour of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, a programming course already. Uh, I was going to, uh, a robot designer was going to how to, to, to get your robot to move forward, how to get your robot to turn, how to get the robot to, to turn around and uh, go back and perhaps use a color sensor or something. And, uh, but after second slide, after I taught them how to, I showed them how to, uh, 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 to get the robots moving forward and back and turn, they just left. They, they just <laughs> jumped, uh, but they left all the, all the slides and went to the robot table and started to solve the task. Okay, that's fine by me. <laughs> Let's see what's, what happens. Um, uh, I, I did mention from time to time we would consider using sensors to solve some issues, or so, but uh, uh, and yeah, so so that, that's kind of there's, learn the basics, perhaps learn the basics about uh, the team itself, uh, something about into the orbit, or spacecrafts, and, and astronomy, just to perhaps ask some questions that should uh, get their imagination going or something. You know? um, so my quote is this uh, for two students: uh, "You paved the way, and my goal is just to help you stay on." Okay. So uh, uh, the ultimate goal. Back to uh, William Albert Einstein. So uh, he has another quote on curiosity. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. How to stop questioning? So uh, I believe this is the. So this is the kind of the way we can. Exploit uh, motivation based on curiosity, and curiosity will eventually lead to innovation to some small incremental steps. So, what is actually the goal we are trying to reach? Uh, uh, we could win the prize today, uh, and I mean, everybody hopes to win the prize today <laughs> or in a couple of days. <laughs> uh, 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 but, what about? in 10 to 15 years from now. Uh, I mean, that's what, what I'm aiming for, to hear that one of my students ha has uh, uh, been a part of some innovative project out there, whatever, for whatever field it is. Up to they, when they're finished studying and to get their job or start their own business, whatever, that they are part of something innovative. 50 years. That's the prize I'm aiming for. And, and I believe there is, a, there is a connection between those small innovative steps, like uh, uh, doing your own, uh, making your own marketing campaign, and making your own robot uh, design or whatever, that, that makes you start thinking in, in, in the, yeah, keep that curiosity in, inside and uh, start thinking in the uh, focus on innovation. So those innovation, global scale, is really what I'm hoping for. Um, we all know there, there are a lot of talks about involving girls in the STEM activities, uh, and uh, uh, in, in our team, Satan, uh, who are here, we have uh, uh, there are two girls, and, uh, and I'm really proud that uh, both of them. Uh, they, are, they are trying out to, uh, they are applying to high school right now. And they, they, have, they, have, they have chosen this uh, science, science, uh, 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 science classes uh, from next year. Uh, I'm not sure if it would be possible for them or that they would, do, they would have done it if they hadn't uh, been part of the first level. So that's, a, that's already the, the, the biggest prize. <laughs> much better than all those trophies we got the past six years in all the first level tournaments. That those pretty girls actually have applied for science subjects next year. So, <laughs> one victory <laughs> for all this. Yes, uh, that's about it. I'm just going to sum it up. So, um, mentor, I believe, is uh, first and foremost a motivator. You want to motivate to achieve ownership, which will lead to innovation. 
uh, given the fact that we uh, actually um, uh, having uh, a curious, curious students on our hands, curiosity is uh, an important magic ingredient uh, which is present in every kid. So, and those small innovation steps. Not, uh, my, I believe all, we have all experienced it, so uh, let's cherish it. And uh, it's kind of a, a victory in itself that you just uh, uh, see those small innovative steps happen. It, it's enough. Uh, so, uh, focus how to achieve this, focus on motivation. Uh, first and foremost, professional competence uh, could be an asset, but uh, it is, it's something that you should actually perhaps uh, uh, consciously set aside. And just enough, learn just enough to be able to kickstart your project and they'll be fine. So, and uh, let's hope we, we see some innovation in global terms in 10 to 15 years or I don't know, 5, 20 years, whatever. And uh, that some of them are um, actually. Uh, uh, first students of today. Yes, uh, we have a lot of time for questions, if there are any questions. Yes. Hi, I was wondering, do you coach multiple teams at the same time? And if you do, do you like if it's multiple teams at the same school, do you group them together to try and motivate them? Or do you try to motivate them each individually as a team? Uh, I, I tried last year to group part of multiple teams. It, it didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to my schedule, of course. Uh, so, uh, but uh, if I see that, uh, uh, I was kind of often uh, uh, alone with uh, over 20 kids, and uh, um, especially when we worked in core values, I was very conscious that we are together. So to trying to, uh, all these motivational parts, yes, gather them together. Of course, we could try some, to find uh, some uh, amusing activities or something uh, to, to, to see that, uh, yeah, to make them more fun, but uh, I, 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 I agree with you, so motivation, they should all, uh, they should all be a part of it. Okay, I had so, another question. Yes. Um, as you go through the year and you're going through your project and, and stuff, how do you, in the middle of the year, once the kids started getting bored and they're like, we've been doing this forever, and how do you motivate them at that point? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Okay, um, what I tried, I, I believe that uh, it was kind of a bit easier in the robot part than the project part. Uh, uh, what we did in the robot part, uh, we, um, uh, uh, I kind of often uh, compare uh, this uh, robot development to, to a, a motor racing or Formula One team, where they have a, a design office, where they have their, their, their drivers, so uh, we had a, 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 a group of 12 people working on the robot, which in, in, in theory was, the pattern was too much. But we tried to make, okay, you guys, you design the robot. Uh, you guys, you, you drivers, you exercise the execution. And we switch later. And, and so we, we had some kind of, a, yeah, the, the, the kind of, there was a, a round robin system that uh, everybody was involved in different activities on the design. And, uh, so that worked out quite well. So somebody, they were all driving during those uh, periods of, of, of uh, difficult periods. And they were all designing and programming, so they, they got, it was not, uh, uh, it was different, different tasks all the way. For project part, it was um, uh, 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 more challenging. Um, often I, I tried to involve them in those uh, Okay, uh, uh, core values, let's help other teams. Uh, let's uh, uh, blog a little bit. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, work with funding. Uh, involve them on funding, I believe it's very important. Uh, let all of us do that. So, uh, uh, but uh, yes, there were definitely times there were uh, uh, 
room now and we have to just uh, break it up or do something else. But uh, kind of um, uh, moving them around, if, even though some of them are better doing something than something else. So, uh, uh, yeah, I hope it's okay. Yeah. To answer, yeah. But other questions? Please. You can get a mic. So I'm a long time FRC mentor, this may be more of an FRC question. Um, so your second to last bullet there, learn just enough to be able to be constructive about the issue. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot where as mentors we help the students sort of understand the problem and then we let them go and innovate and create the solution. And my question is, how do you feel about the, 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 the last step where the students have their idea, their design, and then as mentors we review it, we point out maybe issues or we send them back even better? I'm curious how you take that part. Mm, okay, so the question was about uh, uh, learning to kickstart the project and uh, understanding the problem. And uh, uh, when they have, uh, if I understand the question correctly, you ask you when, when they have a proposal for a problem, how do we go about reviewing if there are any issues? Yes. And, and can, how heavy handed is appropriate for review? Yeah, uh, okay. So, um, uh, I guess that's uh, well. Uh, you you could uh, you could of course uh, 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 easier for me and uh, as a developer to 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 to, uh, to to point out some patterns of, uh, for instance, um, uh, uh, some of, I guess most of the robots out there, uh, both the FRC or or Meta Lab, are quite uh, advanced. Uh, programming level is quite advanced. So, uh, and uh, 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 for, is, for instance, uh, um, uh, finding the error in the program could be quite challenging. Uh, so, um, uh, then uh, I could be tempted to use my professional competence to, to, to suggest something or, 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 or uh, error searching patterns, debugging, as it's called. Uh, uh, and uh, I admit I, I've done so a couple of times. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I believe uh, uh, it, it, was, it would be more like uh, what would be, I guess, more productive it would be like, okay, uh, take a step back uh, and uh, challenge them to analyze the problem themselves. Uh, to see, okay, uh, uh, what is working, what is not working, or perhaps what you're suggesting, what, what, what could happen if we implement this. Uh, uh, try to try to think along alternative paths. Uh, what could happen uh, if you if you, if you go on with uh, this idea? Okay, it will work. Uh, it will work on that occasion, but perhaps it will not uh, work in other occasions. And uh, just to try to challenge them themselves, uh, uh, try to challenge them. Uh, uh, could you think of the occasions where it will not? It, this solution solution will not work, uh, and perhaps try. Um, uh, back to the previous question of getting other from the same team, perhaps they could review the issue themselves. Uh, it could be a good uh, good uh, pattern to, uh, to for involvement uh, as well. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not sure who was first. Oh, you want to? Uh, uh, okay. So here is uh, yes, Mike is, is the answer to the same question. I know for our FRC team with only six weeks, sometimes as a mentor you do have to stand, you have to put the line in the sand because this year we prototyped way too long. And one thing we've noticed with our student is we made them go out and cost the parts because the cost of FRC is much higher. If you're just going to play with an idea, we need to make sure that it will pretty much work and then how much is it gonna cost the team because we have limited funds, we don't have, you know, a sixty thousand dollars off. Yes, and then we, we do off season projects, and then it's like a, our kids know because we went to Worlds this year, we are out of money. So we've already talked that each child is responsible for bringing in a thousand dollars worth of scholarship to the team money. So part of learning in FRC is budgeting, and so we have pushed them to look at Andy Mark and go find out how much that part is. 
you want 15 of, and then make sure you really need 15. So part of it, we've taken it to that level of management instruction, where you motivate them to say, okay, that's a wonderful idea, but now you have to figure out how much it's really going to cost us. And how many of those parts do we have already, and how many parts can we really afford? Is that cost of holding dollars, or cost of holding time? Both. Because with six weeks, you've only got so much time, you can only do so much prototyping. And our head coach this year had a lot of traveling he had to do for his real job. And so he had all freshman mentors as well, and we kind of let them prototype way too long. Because they prototype for about two weeks, which then gives you four weeks, and then, uh oh, that didn't work, and the mentor didn't know it wouldn't work either. So uh, that was a learning experience all the way around. So we have learned prototyping can only take so much time, and then you really need to figure out, yes, your budget for your time, your budget for how much the school will let you in the building, and then straight out money. <laughs> Yeah, we can, can get a little heavier hand. I can try to sum it up. Uh, it was an uh, um, answer to the same question about uh, how to uh, get them, uh, uh, how to, to review or suggest them. And a good point uh, make them uh, be aware of budgeting, funding, uh, the limitations there. Definitely uh, a good point. And uh, uh, so I guess so to take the cost into the uh, review process. Okay, if you implement this, how much will it cost the team? I guess you mentioned something about, um, what is another good point you had? <laughs> what was that? Yeah, the time. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, this, uh, the, the prototyping phase should not take too long before you, uh, before you reach out to implement something. That's very good engineering patterns as well. Uh, very good. Uh, yes. A question there. How would you apply uh, motivation to things other than robotics and like classes? Um, uh, well, uh, how do I apply motivation? The question was how do you apply motivation other than robotics and classes? Uh, in the first Lego League, so that's the, the project part and the robotics parts are what are the most demanding, what I've seen, the motivation is the most needed. So uh, um, I haven't seen issues. There's always someone on the team willing to work on fundings, or sponsorships, and marketing, uh, uh, blogging. They seem to like to like those tasks uh, just out of the box. So. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't, uh, I haven't faced that, that issue. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of a kind of uh, robot design uh, and, and project design where the, 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 the issues pop up along the way, and the uh, motivation might might be the most. <laughs> Yes, so one of my struggles has been sustaining motivation uh, for students. So if we have a relatively big club and we have 15 kids who consider themselves members, and for maybe 15 or 20, the motivation started high and sustained throughout the season. But the rest of them, um, as things became more specialized, and especially Question about how to sustain the motivation throughout the projects. You could answer, of course. Because um, yeah. we had a similar problem. I have two teams, but the other team, one, we had 40 rookies join in this year. 40. I think we had 30 veterans and 40 dead rookies. So, what the heck do we do with 40 rookies and keep them interested? Um, you can't have you know, 70 kids working on competitive robot. So, what we ended up implementing, because we wanted them to learn the skills, get motivated, and get inspired, is we got some kit bots. And so we had some of the men, some of the um, veteran students actually mentor 
the new kids, and they built some kit pop, which they competed among each other. So that at least next year, they have the skills with the hydraulics or the pneumatics and the wiring and the coding already, but they felt a lot of pride because they built these bots. You know, they weren't as fancy as a competitive bot, but at least they were learning these skills, and they're kind of figuring out, oh, I like CAD, or I like programming, or I like build. Um, so that was really a way to engage them this year. It was crazy. So I, I guess to, to summarize it for you, you suggest that you should uh, let the most ex more experienced member of the team mentor the less experienced communities and get, get them throw out, get them fired by today and build their own stuff. Get them involved. Yeah. So they, yeah, talk about ownership. Yeah. Uh, it was um, just a comment that I'll get back to you soon. Uh, uh, the, the, my team here, uh, September First Level League, actually they, uh, they visited a couple of other teams during their uh, uh, local tournament. And I agree with you, the, the effect of each visit was more motivated rookie teams. And they look up to them right now. They're like the, the Septum Agri heroes back in Norway. They are the World Festival and the Scandinavian champions and whatnot. So, so this is like the, the, the fact that uh, more experienced students, not mentors, but students teaching the less experienced could have to be more effective. Yes, sir? <laughs> we also see that. Yeah. For our team, we, we go with the ownership as a model, uh, exactly what we talk about. Uh, so I'll point to Danny here, one of our senior students, and he owns the part of the Android app that communicates with the server. That's his part, he owns it. And we make sure that every student on our team sort of has something to sign. And some parts that they put their signature on is uniquely theirs, all the way through the season. And we're careful to make sure that the students who put in more time or energy don't start. So get, get everybody involved. You want to call out on it also. Get everybody involved. Get every, uh, everybody has assignment to do. Very important. Yes, uh, question back there. Is it right? So our team has a uh, time management issue where certain subgroups take way too much time and others so I help with the okay. guy that handles coding, and just what, what do you do if it's bad day and the code you and basically like literally this year, like bad day was Tuesday, our coding team did not get a functioning robot until Sunday, and so like what what do you do as a question is about time management, uh, the deadline is looming, right? And, uh, and the robot is not functioning, the program is not functioning. Uh, we all agree there. Uh, actually, uh, what I say to them, and, and I say to them quite early, uh, one week before the, the tournament, uh, not things going to work. It happens every year. And I try to, to, try to prepare them. One week before the tournament, everything will break down. It's okay. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, last year I was, uh, I guess I was, I was away uh, 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 on one exercise and my co-mentor called me and uh, he said, uh, look, uh, 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 nothing's working, no, no tasks, <laughs> all the points we, 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 had, we thought we had, they, they're not there. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's normal, that's fine. To be here, we want to be. <laughs> I believe that that's the kind of, uh, uh, if you prepare it quite early, that, that will happen. It will kind of uh, soften uh, the, 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 the skin part. It's uh, quite negative, of course, to just one week before. Uh, but again, I have experienced that uh, they try to, they, they, they somehow they manage it one week. And, and of course, it happens in the tournament itself. It, it's always okay. Something goes wrong because we are all operating in a physical environment. Uh, 
the goals have to be different. So I just try to prepare them. It will happen and you have to deal with it. And but there are of course some patterns to apply on how to, to go to seek for errors or, or what can you do to make it more robust. But uh, I guess just if they are prepared, they will do it. <laughs> uh, one more questions? You want to answer to that question, sir? Answer to the same question about time management? So, for time management, I would say give some students uh, some leadership positions. Like, uh, for each subject, you have to have some sort of leader, leader that, so they'll have a mindset that they're in charge of this, and so they'll be more motivated to actually like, work on it and uh, urge everyone else in that subject to work on it. And uh, they can even like, schedule out, like, hey, you should probably get this and this done. Maybe a list or something, like to do list, and uh, try to see what you can accomplish in the given time period that you're doing. Yeah, so the suggestion was to uh, actively engage the students in the leading the time management or taking care of time management yourself. Very good, very good. Another question? Okay, so. So we have a uh, somewhat similar time management problem. Uh, the students working out, starting out with mechanical systems, and then the, um, the coders, you know, the programmers, are, has nothing to do. How do you guys handle that? You know, we are FRC and also first year mentor. Oh, 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 that's a great thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> the question was if you uh, start to look at mechanics, and then uh, programmers have nothing to do. It's very, very common uh, a problem in software uh, engineering as well, uh, everywhere. That, that, that's it's all about. So, so that's all those agile practices. I believe there is a talk about agile practices and, and first projects. I write up this one. I'm going there myself. Uh, uh, and that's that's this uh, at least the the idea behind the agile practices is to get very early feedback on whatever you do. So instead of uh, um, of course, this is a, a general answer to a rather difficult question, but if you have an issue that uh, you have to be finished with one part and you're going to start another part, uh, I try to perhaps challenge the team to see can they make what's called a walking skeleton? Can they make something that works all the way? Something with minimal programming, minimal mechanics, minimal electronics, is it possible? Uh, I'm not saying it's always possible, perhaps there is a uh, is possible to make something that, that will actually test all those main the backbone of the system and see if it works. So this is the kind of idea that's uh, at least in software programming was a, a good big big issue uh, 10 years or 15 years ago that we had to always to wait for each other. And now it's more like okay, implement it all the way through, not everything but the main idea and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you at least you get the early feedback. It doesn't work. Think of something else, because the danger, of course, what happens that programmers find out? Okay, those mechanical parts are not uh, programmable or whatever. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have time at least one, two questions. An answer for your answer question. to the last question. A little, little bit of an answer. Um, I know on our team we have a test bench for our programmers. It's basically a box. It looks like a bomb, but it has all the wires and it has motors in it. Whatever motors we're gonna, we, we designed to use on our robot for that season, we put those, we go, okay, this motor is supposed to drive the wheels, this motor is supposed to drive the, the holder, this motor is supposed to drive the grabber. And our programmers, the first thing they try to start out with, of course, is like making the move. So first they, and we have the, everything in there that works the same way that it works on our robot, as, but we don't have any of the mechanical parts, just the motor itself. So and you have them like separate, like one is doing the whole uh, robot, the other one is like a test bed. Or right, right, yeah, no, this is completely separate. Okay. It is actually in a metal suitcase that opens up like this. 
and we have wire on it and we just have the motor sitting there and it all wired in and we bring a battery over and hook it up and they program it in and they just see if they can get this motor moving, see if they can get that motor moving. If it goes forwards, backwards, that way they know that they've got the right directions in it. They've got, they know that they need to move the dry train so far. And so they can actually um, put a little counter on the end of the little thing in a counter so that they can see exactly how many spins it's taken, you know, and stuff like that. So they can actually get a very big head start on our autonomous. Now, actually uploading it to the robot and making it work is a little bit different, but it's, when it comes to the programming part, you can see a lot of the errors in the program. You can start, you can start with a lot of that troubleshooting really early, and it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So the suggestion here was to establish a test bench where you can, uh, you can uh, test, uh, let the programmers test before the tweet is loaded. Another suggestion I just uh, make, maybe perhaps programmers should learn something about mechanics and vice versa, make those uh, competence uh, wider. Last question, sir. Oh, I was going to say, we, we also have our course test on last year's robot. Just uh, you know, making it simple tests mm -hmm. and stuff. And our drive train usually stays the same, so that's something that they can do. Oh, yeah, great suggestion. If you have a robot from previous year, make the programmers work on that. Very good. Uh, yes, uh, uh, well, I believe our time is up. Uh, there is another uh, talk coming. Thank you, thank you very much for interesting session. Thank you. Thank you.